one? You're obviously confused in the round. Slurmcast, a podcast for no reason. Today we'll be discussing season four, episode 12, or if you're following along with us on Hulu, season five, episode nine, The Sting. My name is Michelle Burlingame. With me are Tommy Roulette. How's it going? And Pete Woodward. That's me. Our guest today is cool dude from the Second Shot podcast, Devin Newson. Hello. Welcome How's back. I've never been called a cool dude. That's pretty cool sweet. Cool dude. Uh, we create our own reality here. <laughs> it's, I mean, you can be anything you want to be. That rules. I'm a four foot tall Sasquatch. <laughs> <laughs> that is not true. You're not four I, feet tall. No, I look like an unshaved Danny DeVito right now. It's all <laughs> theater of the mind. Um, it's been it's been a while since we had you on. The thing that's been really interesting is as I you know, go back and look at our spreadsheet, like we've done a lot of these episodes, and it doesn't seem like it's been so long since you were in here. But I mean, it's been like probably like a season. It's been a good amount of time. Like, I remember the Cavs were, like, in the playoffs or something last time we were playing I against think, Isaiah Thomas, who made his uh, debut tonight, sports nerd. This is very – it all comes around. Yeah. Um, as, uh, as we were just talking about before the show, we're all experiencing some kind of uh, post-nasal mess. So <laughs> it's gonna, there's going to be a lot of, like, <laughs> <coughs> stuff going on, yeah. I think, all around this episode. <laughs> so happy New Year. Uh, you can actually get sick if you wear ear uh, headphones when you're listening to this podcast. Don't lick your earbuds, guys. <laughs> or do. Or <laughs> yeah, actually, But how do you really get terrible. them to stick in your ear if you don't lick them? <laughs> I mean, true. I don't, don't want to. <laughs> Everybody lick your earbuds. I don't want to jump ahead too far. <laughs> but bees make honey and jelly. How come nothing delicious or nothing humans make tastes good? <laughs> which Best which may be one of my favorite lines of this entire series. Um so the Jumbotron is like an old-timey castle, Three Musketeers sort of thing? Yeah, it was called The Queen Was in the Parlor from 1932. That sounds familiar, and I think because it we, sounds dirty. Uh, I think we've there's also been another clip somewhere. Is there? Because the trumpeter Probably. got like a door smashed into his face, but uh, the, the Queen Was in the Parlor sounds like some sort of Victorian-era sex talk. <laughs> Yeah, I think you brought that up probably last probably time. Probably last time, yeah. too. I, with the Catholic school, it did things. To I wish somebody <laughs> on uh, Infopedia, you could link the opening cartoon and then like see where they're all in different It was another one uh, with episodes. Uh, Goopy Gear. Oh, Goopy We've Gear. We've talked about Goopy what? Gear before. Did, okay, I and I'm going to ask the same that, question I asked last time. That, that dog from the uh, the really annoying like one with the song. How the, do you how was it under the whatever moon? How do you spell Goopy Gear? Uh, ex- well, Goopy like normal Goopy, then uh, Gear G E E R. So that I mean, like they're just naming him after somebody because that's not a real word. Goopy, yeah. Ge- I, don't I mean, think so. I don't know. Uh, I'm not, I don't have the hugest vocabulary. But, I, I mean, it's a homonym with, like, gear. Like, you'd have a, yeah. a gear. It was 1932. They were not as creative as they are. But they were. In the they 80s. Were all, they were all, like, cranked out on drugs, clearly. In the 30s? Yeah. I think. It was absinthe and diet pills. Yeah. I think they just didn't know how to spell. Everybody was poor. I mean, that's possible, too. To, <laughs> no, to they're just like, name him something like Goopy Gear, but not like that. Yeah. <laughs> okay. They can make well, but they couldn't spell. I mean, it's, <laughs> wait, it says G-E-E-R, not G-E-R-E, like Richard Gear. Right, G-E-E-R. It's a different kind of Goopy G-E-E-R. Gear. I mean, G-E-E-R. I think he's probably been referred to as Goopy Gear <laughs> at some point Ew. in his life. Used to call him that back in college. Yeah, I mean, he he's... He's aged well, but you know he's seen some shit. Um, well, he's gooped on some shit. <laughs> <laughs> those are those are gonna hurt. Too. You know, I <laughs> do. Any of you guys like playing golf? Because I'd hate it. I it's like so it. boring to me. I'm bad at it, but I like it. I uh, I have only ever played miniature golf mm-hmm. or top golf. I like miniature golf. I liked Top Golf a Topless lot more. Golf? No, oh. that might be fun too, but maybe it kind of hurt. Um, 
I didn't think I was going to like Top Golf, but the trick is you get real drunk. And I know people who are golfers are going to be like, whoa, that's what you do and you'd go golfing. Anyway, except this, you don't have to walk or drive around. They just bring you the drinks and you just, it's like you're, you're on a raised platform in front of like a, a, a driving range. Okay. And the driving range has like pits with nets and they're colored differently and stuff. And then you just like hit the ball as hard as you can. And you get points based on where the ball lands. That's top golf. That's top golf. And then they serve like, you know, TGI Friday's food and stuff to you and play loud, loud music. And, you know, I'm into that. It, you know, it was, I would never choose to go on my own. It was part <laughs> of a, a business outing. Um, but given the other choices of things that we've done on business outings, I preferred that one. <laughs> that makes sense. Yeah. Like, uh, cause like bowling, it's, there's, uh, we went to this place. This always happens in Dallas for some reason. It's called main event and it's like overstimulation bowling, okay. overstimulation billiards and overstimulation video games. Like over the bowling alley, they have like, you know, video screens mounted across the whole wall. And it's all like f just nonstop video stimuli and loud music and bad oh food. And it's like, <laughs> it's like, I can't handle this. Now, a nice game of frisbee golf would interest me as well. Yeah, but that's because you can get high during it, right? Oh, yeah. I'm sure you I can mean, get high during to. golfing, regular golfing. And you probably can. I just, I, my question was really, why did golfers dress stupidly? I don't, I don't know. I don't know like, the answer to they? that. Cause they still I mean, do. I mean, have you seen the president? But, <laughs> but like, I mean, you know, just like the weird pants and the hats. Uh, yeah. Like the like the, the plaid knickerbockers hats. and stuff. It's always plaid, and then like some big brown shoes that look very uncomfortable. Yeah. I, like, look at what they're wearing in Caddyshack, which it doesn't. It's not even like it's dated. It's like they people still wear shit like that. I think on the yeah. on the golf. It's green. become a, it's become its own style. It's just. I don't know. Do you have Slider any insight best. on that, Michelle? No, I don't know or care about golf because in any way <laughs> whatsoever. Because it's gentlemen. It Tiger stands Woods. for gentlemen's only, ladies forbidden. <laughs> 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 what about what about the LPGA? The Ladies Professional Golf Association. Uh, where they only let ladies play. But there. that's just what golf stands for. Right, but they play golf. Yes. And they're all ladies. Okay, I can't explain why. So they... why did they have to make their own association? So, because <laughs> men are sexist. <laughs> exactly. So lady golf is just more like badass because it's like they're rebels. <laughs> Come on, now. Pete, that's not real golf. They're playing a sport in which they're they're forbidden. lady gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> we can have this uh, discussion when I think I mean, maybe next episode. There's, prob <laughs> there's probably an argument to be made that that's a more accurate statement mm -hmm. than than not, Michelle. But yep. we we won't go there this week. Um, <laughs> I just like I don't know it, it, why <sighs> Bender's all golfed up and he's really. Uh, into it and it just it's another one of those things where it's like why i love when he goes to he has to jump into the screen to save his ball from the water yeah <laughs> yeah and, and he i mean it and was like he's dancing <laughs> it's dancing in the computer too before right. she pulls the <laughs> plug i mean it's like uh uh that whole vr thing like isn't there isn't there an arcade game that's like that or something like, don't they have those at the daves and busters of the they world have stuff like that yeah and there's like actual vr bars now like there's one in ohio like three hours away uh there's nowhere like, three hours away from here that's worth going to where where is it exactly i think it's like somewhere near like finley huh i want to say but like i heard that they were supposed to open one in cleveland this isn't just some sort of a murder barn uh Could be. I mean, I've never been. That's there. probably a game you can play at the VR bar, <laughs> <laughs> Murder Barn. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, it just—it sounds like a real House of a Thousand Corpses I just, scenario. I wouldn't want to do that unless I could like disinfect myself, <laughs> right? The, the the headset because it's gonna be on people's skin, face, skin, <laughs> yeah. ears, hair. Yeah, but you, you went one on of like those flotation tanks. I mean, yeah, who but knows? it's it's disinfected like that when you get out of it it sucks everything out and then pumps new water in yeah, like you watch it are, happen what are you talking about 
when I did that uh, the isolation tank thing. Oh the right, float right. chamber. I mean, whatever you call it. Oh, I mean, just, oh, they may disinfect it and like they do bowling shoes. Yeah, like spray them yeah, all out like, before you. This is this is, this is like direct face. contact with someone yeah. else's face oil on my face. Like I just ugh, like what if they have gross. conjunctivitis? Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah sucking true. the water out of the yeah. tank isn't gonna. Well, the tank is also full of like salt. So I don't know if that's really a, an environment where bacteria can thrive. I feel like we could take this down a lot of rabbit holes that we don't need to get into. <laughs> so let's tonight. get back to this episode. The, yeah, the yeah, whole yeah. point is that sounds filthy, and so does yes. VR. I really like this episode a lot. <laughs> this is one of my mm-hmm. favorite episodes. Yeah, I ended up enjoying it quite a bit too. I feel like uh, a little light on plot, but the jokes it's, were really good. The jokes are really good, and it's just a whole different story of anything else that. Futurama is done. Like, it's kind of like a mind. Like, well, I remember when I originally saw this episode, uh, like not knowing where they were going to go with it. Yeah. Well, I've been wondering why I've been fighting space bees in Worlds of Tomorrow. Oh, for yeah, like that's months. so that crazy. Finally came up now. <laughs> I've been fighting enough space bees. They're like from the beginning. <laughs> yeah, that was like the very first thing you come across. Yeah. Um, I just you know it starts even on a little a little twisty turny where the person like bad news everyone. You're you're not good enough to go on your next mission, <laughs> and and then the, the follow up with Leela, which is like why says who because says me. <laughs> <laughs> like I wish that shit worked around my house. It doesn't. Mm. It that just gets answered with more questions and uh, you know doesn't work. But like you know that that whole uh, I understand where Fry and Bender are coming from. Yeah. We're like, we live to suck another day. Like, <laughs> I mean, on the one hand, I can see it being like, yeah, this is this is above your pay grade. But on the other, like, it's kind of nice to be like, well, here's this dangerous thing, and you don't have to do it. I'm like, Phew. good. I'm going to go take a nap. <laughs> I feel like he, him and Hermes would have, like, conspired to go about that way because they knew Lila would be like, no, we're going to do it. To do it, yeah. So, it'd, like, save so him from was, some like, liability. <laughs> like, yeah. I don't know. I mean, but I guess if anything, it's kind of um, it's kind of off character because the professor has seemingly had no, com- uh, you know, um, aversion to sending crews off to their death. To danger. And, yeah. And like later in this episode, he tries to cut Leela's head off with a guillotine. Oh, yeah, that's yeah. Right. yeah. And he what? says guillotine. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> like, I wonder if they just kept doing takes, and they're like Billy West. It's it's a guillotine, and he just keeps reading it. Guillotine. guillotine. Maybe in the future it's pronounced. Guillotine. Maybe it is. Um, although French is one of those languages that refuses to evolve, so you never know. Um, the, yeah, even just the dumb jokes where he's like, uh, "Is you collecting honey? Ordinary honey? <laughs> this is no ordinary, ordinary. honey." <laughs> I I I just I. A lot of that back and forth where professor would just like do immediate flip flops. It was very endearing in this episode. Like it was almost like while I was watching it, I noticed like the first half of this episode is all just like it's like they did an episode's worth of jokes and crammed it mm-hmm. into yeah. the entire first half. And then the last half was like just classic, uh, sentimental, heartfelt uh Futurama. It got and, it got a little Christopher Nolan y. Yeah. Which I uh, honestly I didn't appreciate. Um, cause, cause like I figure, okay, there's some kind of inception business going on here, but I'm too lazy to want to figure this out right now. Can't they just get through it with eight minutes left in the episode? I'm impatient for it to be done. Cause that's, that's where I'm at, uh, emotionally now. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> the one thing there's one of those jokes they crammed in. Oh, and the other thing about this episode, we were just talking on last week's episode, how like. Amy wasn't in it. The professor wasn't mm-hmm. in it. So were, like, like it, they basically just did this very focused episode on Fry and Leela and uh, and Bender. So to have everybody back and have Hermes in it and everything, like it really and like a lot of yeah. there's a lot of yeah. cameos oh, yeah. in this episode. Yeah, and it, it really, um, I like that. I mean, it's like there's the, you know, it it gets back to kind of the core group which has been missing. It feels like in a couple of the last episodes, but there was. Um, there's a line that's like the, the space bees are larger than most Buicks and twice as ugly. And it's, I mean, this is a thought I've had for probably about 20 years now with the exception of one person that I know. 
Uh, I've never seen anyone under the age of like 70 drive a Buick. We talked about this like two or three episodes ago. I had a Buick. Yeah. So you were like the obviously, <laughs> you were the hand me down one. Yeah. Um, the other guy is a guy I was in a band with who I think exclusively drives them, but we always made jokes about him being old anyway because he's even older than me. <laughs> um, but beyond that, like, they're really like, if I'm on the road and I see a Buick, I'm just like, fuck, because it's just going to be a problem. You know you're going to be stuck <laughs> behind some slow. Or just, you know. Old people should all just die. Well, they will, <laughs> theoretically. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, you know, and we've probably talked about this before, too. But, you know, we're all relatively gainfully employed. Um, I don't even have to leave my house now to go to work most of the time. Lucky. So I'm, I don't have my old commute, and now I can't even handle that old commute, even though it was only like 20 minutes. But if I do have to go out during the day and drive around, anytime during like school hours, it's fuck. Because it's the, the roads are a nightmare. Yeah. Of like, because you have like weird hours, Tom, right? You, you don't go to work until like noon or something. Uh, yeah, a little earlier than that. Yeah. But. So then they're out. They're like, oh, I just got out of morning church, and now I'm going to drive to the pharmacy and the doctor, and I'm going to take four hours to drive three miles because that's <laughs> that you can't be too careful. It's, it's, I feel like they think they're, like, flying down yeah. the road. Like, like, yeah, I, I know some, some older people that hey. won't go on the highway even just because it's too fast. Well, that's, yeah, that's your own reaction time getting killed. But, like... Yeah. I feel like I like there should be a service that lets people, older people, trade in their cars for like a lifetime lift pass or something. You know what I mean? <laughs> or it's just like, I mean, then you think, oh, shit, then you get into trying to get them to use a cell phone, and that's a whole other thing. Yeah. But like, I don't know, that all sounds really expensive, and if you kill them, then they're gone. I, you know, there's, <laughs> there's a way to make money off so. it somewhere, right? Uh, the near Death Star. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. That's, that's right. <laughs> you just cram them in. Um, I mean, it, it, God, I, I have to bring up being old again. Did any of you guys understand the honeycomb reference? Yes, I did. Honeycomb okay. big. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I don't know how long down. they ran that commercial. <laughs> it's not small. Uh, no, no, no. no. <laughs> Anytime I mean, you can get Hermes singing in anything is like. Yeah. yeah, it's perfect. <laughs> and it's, you know, it's, uh, it, that was just such an unexpected, like, silly reference. Like, <laughs> it, it, even with it now, I mean, God, that probably hasn't been on TV in 30 years at this point, right? But it, those, those jingles, they just stick in your yeah. head. Yeah. Uh, did you ever eat honeycomb? Mm hmm. I didn't like honey growing up, and then. At all? I really didn't like honey. I don't know why. I thought it was like kind of weird tasting. It and, is. And uh, then like, all right, this is stereotypical, but the first time I dipped my chicken nugget in honey, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, dang, that's now so I get good. It. Though. Yeah, that's it. That's it. Like I, I still do that. <laughs> never liked actual honey, and then one time I was like. Tried it in my, with my chicken nugget, and I was just like, "Holy it's shit! Like, what, what have I been missing?" <laughs> like, dipping your chicken nugget in the honey sounds like the queen is in the parlor. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's just, it's chicken really, nugget is in yeah. the honey. It's, Making me really hungry. Like, we're we're talking really about the time we lost our virginity. The cock <laughs> is in the honey pot. Becoming, no, that is a re that, I, that is a reference. It's uh, a very erotic episode of Slurpcast. <laughs> uh, I mean, to be expected. Mm. I. I uh, I'm not a he like I won't seek honey out at this point. I'll eat it. There's only like three things that I really would prefer not to eat, and honey's not on that list. I like dip. I like poured on pizza from Edison's. Like it's so, uh, there's a place that will give you a little packet of honey mm -hmm. to dip the crust in. That's uh, unexpected but good. Yeah. Um, I've gone to places where they kind of drizzle drizzle it over fried chicken, which yeah. is sort sort of an analog to um, the nugs. Well, not even the nuggets. I mean, it's, it's almost like the maple syrup or sort of thing that you get with like a chicken and waffles. But but again, this is at a place. Uh, God, that was probably like twenty five years ago. Um, it was down on Detroit. It was called. Oh, what was it called? Chicken and Ribs Express. 
Oh dang! Uh, it was sounds good. Really it was surprised. it was terrible and also <laughs> fantastic because you could get chicken and ribs. And I think Quick. now it's a Chinese place. On uh... oh shoot, you might still be able to get chicken and ribs. We'll just be I, a different kind. I of don't chicken know. And ribs. I don't know. But there's there's a pretty reliable hookup for chicken down the street now, so that's good. Uh, and actually, another one. It's a good hookup for ribs. So hey, we're all fine, and everybody's eating great. Things good. Uh, he lives next to a chicken farmer and a cow <laughs> farmer. Well, that would be beef ribs. That's a oh, whole other thing. oh, that's a whole other thing. Yeah, pigs. There's a beef farm across the street. There might be a murder barn <laughs> <laughs> in my backyard. If you're if that's you're that's what a your restaurant a should be called. Pete's Murder Barn. <laughs> murder barn. As long as they've got PlayStation VR, I'm in. <laughs> <laughs> it's just. Chicken, ribs, and VR. <laughs> did, did Pete's Murder Barn? That's not a bad idea. Oh, you could. It's like one of those. Uh, you know, they take the picking your own steak out to the next level, where it's like you get to slaughter your own animal. <laughs> which, I, you know, which sounds. I mean, really, you could use it as sort of like a profiling thing. It could be like a, a bait and switch for the FBI or something. Like the people that line up, like, no, 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 I want to come in here. They're like, yeah, just go in that back room there. We'll bring them in. Like, slap on the cuffs and off they go. Um, By the way, I'm about to be rude and drink a second beer and uh-oh. crack open a can. No, it's very. That's just, no, that's no, just no, background no. for the right. here. I'll cough while podcast. you're doing it. <coughs> All right, how about? <laughs> How about if I only drink the second beer and I don't drink the third, just like Leela with her honey spoonfuls? Oh, then I'm good. So yeah, you're doing some more play acting. That, yeah. that second beer will get you feeling funny. Ha ha funny. Ha ha funny. It'll help you sleep. Ha yeah. ha funny. <laughs> the, uh, the giant space flowers, that just seemed weird to me. I thought it was cool. It was weird, but it was cool. I mean, how would, how would a giant space flower exist in the absence of water? Air, they have bees to pollinate them. Yeah, they're spy- They're giant space flowers. We don't even know if they Who need water. They need. I was yeah. just gonna say, you don't know what the flora in space needs. But they still make pollen that still turns into honey when bees eat it, right? It's space, space honey. honey. Yeah. There's no ordinary honey. <laughs> 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 and then, well, then they the space, the space flowers are all around a giant hive, and uh, beehives terrify me. Not, not as much as wasp hives or yellow jacket hives, but just the whole. Speaking oh, yeah. of wasp hives, I was, uh, I saw this like ad of things uh, like compartments, secret compartments, and everything. Mm-hmm. And there is one that's a fake wasp nest that you can hide a spare key in. I've seen that. Before. <laughs> really? Yeah. Hmm. That's pretty dope. I don't know. What if a real wasp decided it looked like a you know dream house and moved in, and then you go to get your key, and you're like, oh fuck. Ow, Usually, it's like stabbed. a dead wasp wasp's nest. What's that? How, might be how worse. Would you tell the, yeah, yeah, they'd be like, if it was I mean, plastic, they'd probably go like, nah, fuck that. That's yeah. not, I don't want to live in plastic. That's I I know yeah. this isn't a, a nest. What's it? What but. if it was a modern kind of wasp though? That was like. <laughs> I'm gonna. I'm. I'm. I want to be ecologically friendly and like, use these materials. I want to feng shui this hive. Yeah, I'm gonna hang a mirror. First of all, if he was eco friendly, he would not be using plastic because that uses oil. Well, if the plastic was already made, they're throwing it in a landfill or repurposing it as a new wasp's house. We're, he's a hipster wasp too. <laughs> he just lives in one of those tiny houses. A wasp. He just couch surfaces <laughs> surfaces from wasp nest, nest to wasp to nest. nest. All these SPs are hard to say. Yeah, <laughs> let's keep doing it. Wasps. <laughs> they're they're uh, stingy stingy insects are no fun. No, I like I had I got a cankle one time from a wasp. Nest really that fell during a storm, and I dragged a branch oh, back to my uh, fire pit, dragged it over the hive. They're swarmed all around me. Oh my god, I got stung three times, all in my right ankle. Oh, and I had a cankle for like a week. That's at least you didn't, Thomas J. <laughs> you didn't, you didn't get like dead. <laughs> oh, is that that was uh, the um, my girl, my yeah, girl. my oh, girl, okay. my girl. <sighs> That's uh. Dan I've gotten a number of stings throughout the course of my life, but usually when I see them, I like, I I just don't like 
uh, yellow jackets and stuff. And so I'll, I'll just take whatever spray chemicals are around and spray them until they die from it. So Windex That's, is pretty good. It's not good, though. Not these. You can't spray any bees these days. Yeah. You Why? Because they're dying out. Yeah, yeah, but you know what? Bumblebees don't fuck with and people. Just any, yeah, but like any bee kind of. Anything with they wings. Pollinate, yeah, it pollinates Anymore. still. Yeah, it's I, illegal. I thought yellow jackets. Can't even kill a fly now. I thought yellow jackets didn't pollinate. I thought yellow jackets are just fuckers. They're basically like wasps in a, you know, fancy sweater. I mean, they, they probably don't, but would you know the difference She's between all this up any right sort of bee if you were to just see it? Like, do you know good bees from bad bees? These are the good bees. <laughs> the ones I have inked on my skin, on my arm. Those are good bees. Yellow jackets are pointier and less fuzzy, and they look like dicks. Mm. Uh, not they penises, act. but just like they have <laughs> they an look attitude. Like they assholes. act like yeah. dicks. Yeah. What yeah. about butterflies? What about butterflies? Do you hate them? No. What if they bite you? What if you sprayed can. bees and it killed butterflies because you're polluting because, the air with poison? Or you spray <laughs> the bee and it takes down a butterfly as it's dying. Well, then, again, I wouldn't spray just a regular bee. It would have to be yellow jacket. And the yellow jacket, being the dick that a yellow jacket is, would be like, oh, fuck this butterfly one way or the other. And then a bird came by and ate both of them, and that bird died. Well, was, and then was this one of the birds that shits all over it my It fell car? and hit a squirrel. Yeah, I would watch. Is this one of the squirrels that eats the shit in my garden? You're, you're. I mean, you're basically. I, I'm for all of this. You're not. I, I need to see a Star Wars style movie about like space battles, but it's like bees and butterflies and birds, <laughs> <laughs> and then like the Death Star is just like a giant hive. Peat spraying them dead. Just, well, isn't that basically like Toy Story or ants? Yeah, kind of or jumbled bee up? movie. I don't yeah, know. I, but like, I want like some Star Wars fucking. Action. Like I understand that the. You know, we've got a bee blight, which is going to make us all be dead eventually because mm-hmm. it's going to, A, we're going to run out of honey, and B, none of the fruit's going to get pollinated. Yeah. But uh, No crops. What's, uh, what it's probably going to do, and, uh, you know, this is going to put a big crimp in the president's wall plan, is we're going to need a bunch of migrant workers to come in and, like, finger flowers <laughs> and, po- like, self-pollinate, which is something that farmers are doing now. Uh. Especially like, um, or you know, like horticulturalists when they're trying to create specific breeds, like they'll, you know, they go in and touch because the the flowers are just the sex organs of the plants. So that's why you give them to people to be like, hey, here's a bunch of sex in your face. Sex organs. Yeah. And then you just, you know, you you, you (laughs) tickle them. Tickle them and move it around. And I was picturing like a bunch of bumblebee men from Simpsons. <laughs> <laughs> aye, aye, aye. Well, yeah, that's just, I mean, if they have some flair and take some pride <laughs> in what they're doing, that's uh, that's a perfect. I wouldn't put it past our president to make them wear those <laughs> outfits while they were doing it, though. Yeah. It's, uh, nothing, is, nothing is impossible anymore. <laughs> I mean, a, another, uh, wasn't that a... Wasn't that a Black Mirror episode where they yeah. they replaced the bees with uh, robot Those bees? Those little drones. Oh yeah. yeah. So that'll happen too. That was the uh, last season. Yeah, I was thinking, what season was that? I think that was last season. Yeah. Oh, one of the ones that was super depressing and uh, scary. I mean, all of them. Oh, all of them. Well, not all of them. This have season, you, have this you started the new season? One. I'm three episodes in. It's goofy. I fell asleep during the third episode, and I have not restarted it and gone back in yet. The very last episode is really good. I heard it's like the best one yet. Oh, I heard the very last episode was the worst one is what I heard today. No. No. I thought it was the best one. The the second to best one. From what I've gathered, by the end of the season, people are like, this season was amazing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. There's a, like, all in all, there's a couple. Like, the third one is about the app or the dating thing, right? Is no, the the, third, the one? third one was the the chick and the dude who are driving the and dude, they yeah. hit the guy. Oh right, okay. Yeah, I'll have to I'll have to get into this. I ended up having to watch Futurama for some reason. Oh, this weekend. <laughs> didn't didn't have a chance. Well, to get to I it. was watching it after I left your show. <laughs> yeah, which we all went to. We did. I went to it, but I left before it started. I, I know that was you. funny. We were all in the same place at this, you know, the same night, but. You have to go to some other place where the younger, hipper people were. My girlfriend, I kind of had this surprise 30th birthday party for at another bar. Did it work? It did. Was she surprised? She was. How surprised was she? 
She was like, oh, my God, I'm so surprised. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I've met her, and that does sound just like her. That's a <laughs> dead-on impression, yeah. <laughs> you, could, you could trick Alexa with that. Did, <laughs> did uh, you, at any time over the course of the party, did you dress up like a bee like they made Bender do in this? Um, I did, and I insulted women. Just like Bender did. <laughs> awesome. That's perfect. Because if there's one group of people on the planet that needs insulting frequently, it's women, isn't it? They oh, just, totally. I mean, they, they really don't catch it from any other quarter. Taking down a peg or two. Yeah. Yeah. It's not like. Uh, Sorry, Michelle. I thought <laughs> the show was better with Rick. My bad. Oh, <laughs> oh man. Uh, I like in this episode, though, how they like they had Bender be- make that comment and then instantly. Uh, the queen was like, you try keeping your finger out <laughs> of like 30,000 children or whatever she said. Oh <laughs> yeah, that well, like, I, at this point where they actually entered the hive is where it got, like, real weird. First of all, why did they have to paint Bender like a bee? Like, if he had the cartridge in to, like, dance, wouldn't that be sufficient? Uh, maybe they just maybe needed to see the yellow and black. Hmm. It's for the audience. Maybe because be- bees are racist. I don't know. Maybe they're like, they're like, what, what's bees. this thing talking bee to me? And then they now they're like, oh, it's an, just a walking bee. Okay, a shiny metal walking bee. I don't I, know. You know the the uh, shiny metal daffodil. Oh, <laughs> that sounds pretty. Is uh, another nod to obsolete technology that's no longer really a thing. They had a cartridge with the bee like software on it or the language which seemed uh, weird again because all of a sudden there's like a hole in his head to accept these cartridges has never been there before but then like when was the last time you had a cartridge for anything i still play game Boy ink cartridges I'm not gonna lie those are i i mean i feel like those are, those are really more like little tanks. it writes the language of the printer it's a, just a tank though it's a it's yeah, a bottle well, of it's ink. still a cartridge okay fine game boy but that's Really, that's technology that predates Has this dispensers. Thing. Would you consider like a like a tape, like a cassette tape, Does a cartridge? It, like yes. Nintendo Switch have cartridges? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, little tiny huh. cartridges. Yeah. Are you are you gonna reveal that you have a large cassette collection or something? No, no. <laughs> I don't even. I think I own maybe five cassettes. Well, here's here's a hot tip. If any of you want to go out and dumpster dive my garbage can at the end of the driveway right now <laughs> there's about 300 punk rock cassettes oh no <laughs> in the garbage well they've been sitting in my mom's attic for like 15 years uh is which isn't climate controlled mm-hmm. so i imagine they're just fucked and it, yeah. i just it was an exercise in being like oh i'm dead inside and have no sentimentality left over all this stuff and it's just like here you go because it's all I already either rebought it on cd years ago or i can get it off of some weird streaming service there are a few like you know, but random local ones that I that's kept. The thing you gotta like, yeah, just like realize your sentimentality is still there. You just gotta get over the form you play it in. You know, uh, I didn't even really. Most of those I bought used, so it's not even like the artist got the money for it in the first <laughs> place. There is a a local artist I have seen who splits cassette tapes and makes wallets out of them like she hot glues a zipper Whoa. between pieces of cassette tapes and thinks she probably sells them for like between 10 and 20 bucks a she piece better get into my so. garbage <laughs> but you know what probably uh, sell them for like 50 more than that honestly like what, people buy that what you have to understand is uh the reason my house is full of garbage is because my wife does stuff like that when she has uh, a little bit of time to do it so I can't encourage that kind of behavior or I'll, it'll be crushed under <laughs> some, like, just giant pile of trash. It's like, no, 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 I'm going to repurpose and upcycle. I'm like, fuck yeah. no, it's just going to sit and collect dust <laughs> for another three years. I can't take it. So I under- uh, That's I know about that my like, expiration date, three years. If I haven't done anything with it, it's gotta go. it goes because I have to make room for the other stuff that I don't throw away. Yeah, it's just, I Import, mean... Import-export. If it's ostensibly garbage to begin with, it's got to be in and out, or I lose patience with it real quick. Because mm-hmm. it's yeah, and it was just I mean it was like a lot of cassettes. It's like oh shit, like this is this is a lot of stuff. Getting back into this episode, because we were, we were talking about cartridges, Tom. There's a cartridge that teaches Bender. I have to, but I have to, this how to dance. Really, I really want to <laughs> talk about this. Let's one do it. Thing. Why did Leela take the baby queen bee? Because she was cute. Like, well, leave so it they, in its natural habitat. 
She wanted to. Uh, she wanted to collect more space honey so they wouldn't have to go to that so planet. Wouldn't have to go to the planet. That seems Royal smart. Jelly. But I. So let me smart ask this: cruel. Is this foreshadowing? Is she starting to get like baby fever? No, I don't think so. No, this isn't like a yeah. recurring mm-hmm. thing because no. she's. I mean, she has a thing for like small, cute animals, even when they're dangerous, like Nibbler. You know, so this yeah. is almost an analog for that. Um, and also, she usually is uh, very. She she like has an affinity towards small cute animals. Yeah, but she also has like a consciousness of being environmentally friendly, and like the the poplars and stuff. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And so it seemed kind of weird that she wanted to like disrupt this ecosystem a little bit, but it made sense for her, I Could guess, it, in a way. If space honey has the same sort of. Uh, psychedelic or whatever effects maybe there's fumes or something that make people act funny around it like if they're surrounded by it but that was actually that was a question i wanted to ask is like the entire hive from the place where they landed seemed to be chock full of honey so why did they have to go all the way into the hive to siphon all the honey out the the royal there's the honey the space honey and then the royal jelly which yeah. comes from the queen just Right, but they were getting the space honey, which is no ordinary honey. They there is nothing about the royal jelly. Oh. She got the only she, got the royal jelly to feed the queen. The yeah, she just took a jar no, of no, it. No. They had the big like suction pump thing. Mm. And Fry uh, can't swim in jelly, as far as he knows. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of like Help. to try and swim in jelly. Do you think? Uh, I think it would be more pleasant than it, not. I don't know if you could be buoyant in jelly. I think you'd just like sink and drown. Yeah. Isn't jelly denser than water though? You might be able to float easier. Yeah. But it'd be it'd be so tough. It'd be, be like so restricting. Sand. Yeah. Yeah, that you it would be tough to keep yourself afloat. I don't know. I don't know. It'd be like in jello. You could just move around in jello. Oh god. I just like I think it would just feel nice. But could you think about like yeah, you could probably move around in jello if it was a small amount of jello, but if you were like neck deep in a vat of jello, you could you get slippery. out? I don't know. Let's try. It depends on the flavor. Do <laughs> you have a baby pool? <laughs> no. I do. <laughs> oh, God. Let's just dig a hole in the backyard and <laughs> fill it with so, jello. You know what? It's so cold outside, <laughs> it would probably set. You could probably. <laughs> <laughs> that would, honestly, that's the way I want to go. I want to be frozen in jello. <laughs> like on Solo and Carbonite, but in a delicious strawberry banana flavor. Be, and also, I want to be put on display at a nightclub. <laughs> I mean, that could be like... It has to be temperature controlled very, very well, though. Like Otherwise, a David Blaney melt, you know? sort of have to be, uh, nightclub act. You have to be like in uh, Penguin's uh, nightclub from Batman. Yeah. Yeah, but... You, what is it? I, the, mean, uh, I forget what it's called. I'm blanking right now. Oh, I can't remember. Are either. you talking about Gotham? Well, and I, oh, yeah. I do watch that show. Okay. How do you, that's what I was just thinking. How do you feel about that show, by the way? Uh, Are you a fan? I'm a fan. I'm, I am a fan... Um, is there a is there dude, a real? That's gotta be your second shot topic. Oh, that is good. You gotta yeah. come on the show. Like I am an advocate of that show. George is not. Oh, okay. We yeah. gotta convince him. Is All there right. a Batman yes. on it now yet? Kind of. Well, I mean, there is or there is not. Uh, there's a Bruce Wayne. Yeah, but he was like a boy. Yeah, he's not a Batman yet. No, he's, he's not a Batman yet. No. He hasn't put on the cowl, but he's done things that are he Batman like green underoos. He's right now he's trying vest. to he's like a really like he's become a pretty good detective of things. Okay. So. My my main argument for that show is that if you watch it like it's a cartoon, then you'll like it. Gotcha. If you watch it like it's the animated series. Okay. That makes yeah, sense. Yeah, I agree. Because it'll like get that. you over the corner. And they had Paul Rubens on it for a while. Yeah, he yeah. was. Okay, yeah, he I, was. I forgot yeah. that he was on there. That's he usually Penguin's good. Dead, I haven't I really gotten yeah, in. Did. I haven't yeah. really gotten into that show. Well, you have your own problems with the DC universe, yeah. don't you? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I do. I stated earlier. And by the way, if you were the one who stole my internet password and fucking <laughs> torrented Justice League on my internet, go uh. eat a dick, because <laughs> Cox shut off my internet today because someone that's awesome. uh, used my internet to torrent while I was at work. Not home. Like Torrance, so, well, Torrance, well, well, Captain America Civil War. Torrent has, a good movie. You don't have to because it's already on Netflix. 
that's a good point. Is is Justice League out yet? <laughs> it's in mm-hmm. theaters. It's is currently it? like it's in still theaters. in theaters. Like it, I think so, yeah. Really? Yeah. I'm trying to make every I mean, scrap I just, they can from that. I just saw uh, Star Wars the other day, which is like the first mm-hmm. movie I've been to in probably a year, and it was uh, it had both stars and wars in it. So, had I, star and a accurate. War. I have strong opinions about and that space in between Star and Wars. Yeah, mm-hmm. but that's not in the title. There's a space in between stars and wars. I was upset about the misleading subtitle because clearly that's some bullshit. <laughs> um, but yeah, so we we uh, back in the honey hive, they hard, they find the old planet Star Wars when you're talking about space. But <laughs> is that uh, is that okay? Like yeah. we we're not demanding. Yes. Um, they found the old Planet Express ship. And the black box, which had the professor telling them they weren't good enough either. The professor was right. We weren't as good as his old crew. <laughs> so who was the who was the alpha crew? Like what killed them then? Uh, who knows if that was even the the beta beta the the beta beta beta, beta. yeah beta crew. Beta, beta, beta is a kind beta, of blues it's a, or a fish. Yes, <laughs> but I say that like beta because it's spelled the same. Beta. Let's. I don't remember how it's That's spelled. like the first and only time you ever see a sh- that ship or that logo and really? that ship. That's yes, it. That's it. Well, well there's so- one other episode where they go and talk about another one of Professor's crew. Is the ship not involved in that one? Not, no. Mm. No. Maybe the ship came back. So it, it, it mean, could he's really explore that more. Because it's in a uh, whale. Yeah. It's in a, they're in a whale. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's right. I forgot about that. The Mobius dick. <laughs> that, that I mean that we just we um we did skip by the line that I I brought up earlier just that thing where fries like bees make honey and jelly how come nothing humans make make taste, taste good, good. <laughs> and it's just it's like so disgusting and so fry and then it brought back the whole licking your ear buds thing because <laughs> ew but uh yes yeah, secretions man it's not good although. That's what the Slurm Queen said about honey comes from bees. Yeah. But, uh, or whatever. So just just as there may be a way to game the system on this. And I don't know if any of you have an experience with this, so I'm just, just hipping you to it. Okay. When, uh, when a lady has a baby and needs to make the milk for the baby to eat out of her body... Mm-hmm. I'm not talking about the breast milk. I'm not. That's not where I'm going with this. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, one of the things that they can do is take this. Um, it's an herb called fenugreek, okay. and when you eat it, your sweat starts to smell like maple syrup. Whoa. So like, <laughs> when, you know, this is going back like ten years or so ago. But like, my wife was taking this because she was trying really hard to breastfeed our daughter. And like her armpits would smell like maple syrup. It was crazy. That's awesome. and, and apparently, like, do you remember there was like a story in the news like ten years ago where this town in New Jersey, like everything smelled like pancakes and nobody knew why. It ended up being mm-hmm. I kind of remember this. They were processing fenugreek, and that's what created this the <laughs> sensation in people's noses. But like, you could you could game the system like that. You know, sometimes like no, just eat a lot of pineapple or whatever. But like that'll just make you stink like a fucking you know pancake. I think I'd rather smell like pancakes than my regular bo. Yeah, right. That would <laughs> like why doesn't why don't people do that all the time instead of deodorant? I don't know. I don't have bo, so it doesn't matter. I, I smell wonderful all the time. Not according to my nose, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> I can't smell anything, so I can't tell. All right, so uh, maybe that's a a game our listeners should play. Go start sure. chomping on fenugreek, fenugreek and report back. If you could make yourself smell like maple syrup, it could. Have a it could really affect your life in a positive way, mm-hmm. or you could get chased to death by bees. Um, <laughs> the uh, that was I mean, but that was the other thing with the baby queen. Like, I why would there be another queen in the hive anyway? Because I thought the whole thing about beehives is like there is the one queen, and when they're gone, like the hive evacuates and. Well, these are space bees, so we don't know. Okay, exactly. I don't yeah, know the science it's... behind bees. Or Clearly. Space, or space bees. Have, have <laughs> any of you ever had jelly in your underpants? Nope. No. That seems yeah. like the Yeah. Mo- <laughs> <laughs> I've had peanut butter. Want to make a sandwich? <laughs> 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 Disgusting. Oh, see? 
<laughs> we tell you we get there. <laughs> we're there. <laughs> because really, For really sure. now we're just one breath away from a that's not chocolate joke. And then it, it all it all comes together. Um, it's Nutella. Never the, mind. Uh, Never mind. I was wondering, because I, I had to stop and go back and forth on this, this scene a little bit. But when they go to escape, like when Bender insults the fat queen. Yes. Um, I didn't notice it the first time, but, you know, you see Fry's got his jetpack on upside, <laughs> upside down. down. yeah. <laughs> and, like, first of all, how did he do that? Second of all, why wouldn't Leela or Bender say something about it? <laughs> and then the thing that I was trying to figure out, and it turned out to not be the case, is that she called it the Emergency High-Speed Self-Contained Escape Pack Crisis Response Unit. So I thought, like, is this going to be some awesome, like, uh, like, anagram or something? And it's it's not. It's like, escape crew. Escape yeah. crew, escape crew. If you sounded out right, that's and that's something that, the Futurama writers yeah. would normally pick up, but this time they missed it. Yeah, and it is. Yeah, it's a shame they could have done something, but it's whatever. not good. I still love this episode. Um, but that like I was impressed though that they kind of foreshadowed it because you do get like two or three good shots of it being on upside down before they fire it off, and you, you wouldn't even think about that until it lights it up. Yeah. Um. But uh, they, so they escaped. They fly back to the ship. Um, I didn't understand why the one B exploded because <laughs> it's just like a space battle. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just, boom, yeah. Like Star Wars comes. Yeah, out. exactly. And then why didn't they? Why didn't they pull up the hose? They just uh, left with it dangling. I think just to get out of there. And then I was like, wait, did they leave all that honey there? But no, they probably like sucked up a bunch into a vat and then it was just what was left in the hose. You would think so. Yeah. Um, I don't know. If bees are chasing me, I'm just going to leave a hose dangling I mean, it out of like my ship. It seemed like it was pretty cold. They were just going <laughs> to leave Bender there. They were like, fuck Bender, Good luck, we're going. Bender. Yeah, like that. Well, he's a, he was a... It's his fault. It was his fault yeah. and but this he's is, a robot. He this is why survive. the professor thought they weren't good enough to do this mission. But turns out they were maybe sort of. maybe <laughs> yeah. the other yeah, crew was was good enough, but they weren't going to leave someone behind to die at a horrible bee death. They also I mean, flew a little bit too far into the hive. Bender's not really like. alive; he's just a robot. Oh, see that? And we don't know what the other crew. The, yeah, his last crew may not have had a robot. This is true. You never know. Maybe that's maybe that's just it. You have to leave it behind. But so, like, then the, does it seem like the baby queen like? Grows in size. No, it unfurls. It's like very small, though, and then it was, like, very big. Like, it was man-sized. Or am I just misreading that situation? No, it seemed smaller than the other bee. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, smaller than the queen, but it seemed oh. to grow, like... Oh, yeah, it kind of get did kind of get bigger when it was... Yeah, the stinger's pretty big to, like, go through Fry and also... And then yeah. Lila. yeah. Maybe it did just grow. Who knows? We yeah, don't. We don't I, know the science behind space bees. Well, someone needs to explain that shit because it. You know, for as much as I like, we this need to episode, talk to a space apiarist. <laughs> <laughs> how, how quickly do you think we could find someone that uses that exact title on the internet? Probably never. Minutes. I. I bet it would be like there's got to be some weirdo out in like Boise or something. It's like I'm a space apiarist. <laughs> this is my space apiary. To find that person, all you need to do is wake up. <laughs> oh, there, here we go. And here's where we fall into you inception. call this a wound? It's a boo-boo at best. <laughs> I call I... dibs on that band name boo-boo at best, by the way. <laughs> you guys think that Fry was dead? Like, what if that well, was I, it? And then... Well, I figured he, he was wasn't impaled. dead. Because they've revived dead people before. It's true. But it shows they're at his funeral and... But They're it's, all standing around his casket. It and, still has that emotional pull. Yeah. Like, yeah. Oh, Zoidberg, Bender had, like, the veil. <laughs> Zoidberg says, too bad I couldn't take out the stinger. And then, like, it shows Fry <laughs> still has the stinger going through his body. I love the body. priest the most. Oh, God. Like, this is, I love this whole episode. Like, it's hard for me to rank scenes, but this is one of my favorite scenes. Yeah. Because the he, he goes, I never knew Philip. But as a clergyman, I have no problem telling his loved ones all about him. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right. I, like, uh, it's, it's, it's a very, um, funerals are weird. I had to go to a few of them this year, and they're, uh, they're strange. But the, even the stuff where, like, the professor's like, oh, no, 
It's not your fault. I'm lying to make her feel better. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's it's pretty good. I so what was the connection to Chester A. Arthur? I don't I'm, I feel like he was in an episode and I just missed it. Like, was he in something before? They did a lot of callbacks in that scene. Yeah, Gun I don't... Gunter was there with mm -hmm. the hat. Gunter was there. Did you? I want to know if you Pete caught all the throat, all the callback jokes in that scene. Uh, I saw Scruffy playing the bagpipes. Good. There were all of his exes. Yes. Uh, oh, where, yeah, with the radiator. The, yeah. But no, I didn't understand the radiator. Did I he miss that one? He made good snoo snoo. <laughs> snoo, -snoo. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, like, um, you know, the Amazonian was like that, and all the rest of them were like, eh. I didn't recognize all of them. Like, there was the lady from. Um, Just or Arthur was from The Day the Earth Stood Stupid. That's what oh, I was. Oh, okay. yeah, that's right. All right. So, um, um, there, I saw Michelle. There was Michelle. There was. Amy had Amy a featured there. scene yeah. um, when she said he's walking on sunshine now. Yeah. Like, that was <laughs> incredible. So yeah. incredible. I, I didn't really know if there were any other obvious ones there then. There was uh, kind of a callback when Bender was like, every time I would say kill all humans, I'd say kill all humans except for Fry. Except for him. Um, but then there was, uh, if you remember, uh, the dude who, as he got shot off into space in the in the coffin, yelled out the window. Oh, uh, goodbye. Farewell <laughs> yeah. from the world of tomorrow. Yeah, so, I, I mean, yeah. and this is... Good callback. This is maybe uh, just a function of... And the Signoids were there, too. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Right the yeah, beginning. the pizza people. and Or, no, the water people. Or the ones from the Trisol Signoids were there, too. Are, were the, yeah, both the Trisolians and the Signoids. Signoids on the pizza place. Yeah. Um, I mean, this is probably just a function of you having not been on the show in a while, but like now it's not that I haven't seen this stuff. It's just me forgetting it. Oh, I still <laughs> forget. Like no matter how many times I watch these episodes, like I just watched it and I already forget some of it. Right. Yeah. I, I literally have to write like as I watch, I almost like I'm typing constantly like yeah. I'm, like a courtroom fucking stenographer. <laughs> stenographer. Yep. <laughs> Like, it's hard to get all, catch everything they do. They do so much. And this this one was really dense. Um, but it was so what? What was the significance of the radiator? Like, that's did he? Does that just mean that he'd been doing it with the radiator? Yeah, he he does do it with the radiator in a different episode. Was it the the robosexual episode? I don't remember. No, it's which um, one was it where he uh, <coughs> Fry had sex with a radiator? You know who it's wasn't one, there? We, it was a past one that we just... Lucy Lou was not there. <laughs> um, but she did get exploded. It was from the Lesser of Two Evils. Okay. I didn't I didn't remember it. Yeah. Um, but I figured that was the significance of it because it was all of his ex-girlfriends there. Mm-hmm. And the radiator is one of them. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, yeah, just uh, then, then it kind of, you know... This is a surprise twisteroo where Leela takes a space honey and gets fucked up. Yeah, that I kind of want to try space honey. Right? I know, right? <laughs> I love that they brought that in there, just like the whole idea of tasting the honey and the honey being like this mystical kind of like ambrosia type substance. Yeah. Which would give you powers or like NyQuil. Special... <laughs> exactly like NyQuil. <laughs> or Xanax. We have all had space honey. <laughs> <laughs> What's the one that is it Ambien form. that makes you like wake up and do crazy shit with Ambien? Your sleep? Yeah. Well, well, I mean, yeah, it can There's, any of those uh, can make you sleep well. Shit does you like makes you do crazy shit. There was a dude this past year at my job who came into our store because he went on the wrong sleep medicine, like this lawyer who I don't believe that entirely that it was just sleep medicine. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but he came into our store at like six in the morning, like two hours before we open, like six or 6.30, and was just like, he's wearing, so he's wearing no socks, no shoes, a button-up shirt, no pants. <laughs> <laughs> at all. No he the was produce. wearing underwear. He oh. was wearing underwear. But he had all this black crap all over his mouth. And, like, the people who were in the store at the time were like, did he get Mark all over? Like, what is going on right now? Yeah. Like, literally, like, uh, my one manager, like, grabbed her cutter, like, her <clears throat> box cutter, to, like, attack Oof. this person if need be. Because, I mean, like, you, 
they all like literally woke up like an hour before this. So you're like, yeah. oh shit, what is going on? My life is on the line. I gotta throw down. There's a um, half naked <laughs> what did attorney. He it turned, he was out of his mind and he thought he was shopping and he's like, are you guys open? I need some fucking vegetables. And shit. <laughs> <laughs> um, and basically, I guess security had been tailing him. They came in like, for some reason, like 10 minutes later, like they were telling him, but they're like, yeah, we'll let him go in that store. We'll just see, see what, what happens. happens. <laughs> Did you ever find out what the black crap on his mouth was? The black crap on his mouth actually was mulch that he was eating <laughs> in his underwear. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, so uh, fucking Space Honey does some crazy shit, guys. Yeah. <laughs> the moral of that story. Stay oh, off man. Space Honey. Yeah. I guess so. It just then it just it comes with like a one liner sort of thing here. Like, of course he still exists as a frozen corpse in outer space. <laughs> but like when she has the dream and he says that he's got this present for her in his locker, like they, yeah. Yeah, they open the locker. The locker is disgusting. Like it's just got like what is Fry's locker? Yeah, I know, but all over it. How? I mean, how? I'm just trying to think of the conditions you'd need to have, A, where you could leave, like, weird puddly stains like that in a locker, and B, leave it without cleaning it up. Uh, you have to be a person named Philip J. Fry are the conditions. <laughs> oh, God. I just, I don't know. that. It almost gives me anxiety thinking about how, like, gross it would be. Well, Bender cleaned it out. He took all the stuff out, so who knows what was in there that uh, Bender took yeah. and sold. It could have been like leaky fast food bags and stuff yeah. that just sat. And... By the way, I love how quickly he was like, yeah, there was nothing like that in there. Here nope. you go. Here's your present. <laughs> <laughs> is it, is it, Zoid, it had to have been Zoidberg. It was like his bupkis <laughs> that was in the in the locker. Yeah. Um, but uh, like... I don't know, the whole thing, and I guess it all makes sense at the end when it gets revealed of what's really going on, but, like, yeah. Leela, Leela having the, oh, we got to scan your brain, and the person's like, okay, here, just put your head in here. <laughs> in the guillotine. Uh, <laughs> Can't you examine my brain without cutting off my head? <laughs> yes. yes. Very simply. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, they Fry's could just, dead, and he's never coming back. They could just bring her back, too, right? Or they could put her in a jar. I'd have to imagine that it wouldn't have been the end of Leela had he had chopped her head off. Right. Uh, but, boy, the professor never misses an opportunity to create some bloodshed. Um, I really like just the whole, like all the dreams that she has. It's just very, like... It's like a whole different than what Futurama is normally. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. she even says, it's uh, like a mind This trip. must be oh, real. Yeah. It's way too romantic to be <laughs> my own imagination. <laughs> it's like part of the like story building that they do throughout the show that like makes the viewer think and truly believe that what Fry is going after is legitimate and he knows there's feelings there in Leela, which I think all the viewers think are there as well and this was like a really like kind of heart-wrenching episode for anyone regardless of gender who's going after another person where you think there's something there and like you just keep trying to no end and isn't that called stalking I call it admiring from a near <laughs> 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 but uh yeah, there's a fine line, we'll say. Well, yeah, <laughs> I, I mean, and but especially But it pulls at those now, heartstrings. I, it's like there's an old Onion headline that was like, man arrested for romantic comedy behavior. Uh, <laughs> you know, I'm paraphrasing that, but it's like, it, it's, it's, very, it's very tricky. It all comes down to sort of the, the subject and the receptivity. And then, well, we, I mean, we talked about this. I don't know if we talked about it on mic or off, but you had a recent experience of getting creeped the hell out. Yeah, I did. By somebody who did not uh -oh. read social and cues an even appropriately. More, and an even more recent occurrence that really? happened on New Year's Eve. Oh, uh, no. But this one turned out much better. Oh, I, well, we can save that off mic, too. Did yeah. <laughs> somebody die from space venom? Almost. <laughs> I'm... Why Someone was, almost uh, got their face busted is what happened. Why oh. was Bender on fire? <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> There's just a scene where they're putting Bender out because he's like on fire and they're spraying him with a fire. It wasn't smoke. from the don't worry, be happy scene, was it? It was, I think, right after that, maybe. No, it was before that, actually. This is probably in the second dream where she got the jacket. 
Uh, it's, yeah. it's right around uh, Hermes saying, I'm from Jamaica, the show me island, so show me, show me blowing it out your fanny. <laughs> <laughs> Which I loved. Because it wasn't even his normal thing where he's got like a weird rhyme. It was just like, yeah, we're going to take this and just botch it all just up. going to do it. Um, is it. Like then there was another one of the professors just like, you, you be careful, you purple haired imbecile. <laughs> 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 like, oh my God, like I'm just looking at my notes. Like all this shit was just like, bam, 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 bam. And then Zoidberg talking about the uh, what happens when you take the spoonfuls. He's like, one, you feel funny. Two, it'll put you to sleep. And three, it'll put you to sleep that you've never woken up. But he's, like, using his little mouth tentacles <laughs> yeah. to count it off. Like, mm -hmm. I, I wish I had mouth tentacles like well, that. Well, he can't count off on his fingers. He's he, got claws. He's got he could, claws, he could, that's true. He could... He, Zoidberg could figure it out. One. He did with his mouth tentacles. <laughs> <laughs> he's a genius doctor, if anyone doesn't no. know. <laughs> uh, he can't... I mean, he can do everything except pull a stinger out of someone's body. <laughs> or attach limbs in the right place. Although he might have pulled it out. Who, they didn't say who pulled the stinger out of Fry's body. This is true, because, well, I mean, we're jumping ahead, but I guess at this point everybody knows what's going on, right? They all watched it. Um, well, Leela wakes up, because in, in the, that previous dream of Fry, he gives her his jacket and she wakes up with Fry's jacket, but then when she gets to set Planet Express telling everybody what's going on she's like look i have fry's jacket and then it's it's her jacket and the professor's like that's some green off the rack number yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is this is right around the other thing where he's like why am i sticky and naked did i miss something, <laughs> did fun? I miss something yeah. fun yeah <clears throat> i think we've all had those mornings <laughs> like, huh oh huh okay i mean I mean, I'm a virgin, so. There was a, a deleted scene when he comes out of the uh, the royal jelly, and uh, instead of asking, like, saying something about getting a sponge, she says something about getting a rag. And she's just like, Fry, is that you? Should I still get a rag? Mm -hmm. And then he's like, why am I all sticky? Did I fall asleep on the movie theater floor? <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> Ooh. Oh, I like, Ooh. I like what's better, though, that... Uh, what he said in the actual Did I miss something episode. Fun? Yeah. Yeah, that's a better one. <laughs> the other one's not bad, but that's a better one. Mm -hmm. I, this is just the this is the point where uh my notes actually say this exception stuff is kind of tedious. Like cause I knew that it was just gonna be some kind of layer where there'd be a switcheroo ending somehow, whether it was Fry was actually hurt and coming back or I mean, because he was fucking impaled. Yeah. On mm -hmm. that, like, it's, it, yeah, she got stuck with all the venom, but I mean, that was like, you know, a, a, a three inch wide thing no. that went through it his whole be body. Like, yeah. It may be like, yeah. Maybe tedious was the word to use. Like, I thought they wrapped it together very well. Like, threading the whole wake up thing throughout the episode. Yeah, that was cool. Yeah. To yeah. realize it's Fry, like, just heartbroken at her hospital bed was like, that's perfect. Like, and it was almost like when she was dreaming, she was almost like a little bit lucid in the coma. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But then... Well, even in her... Uh, there are a lot of references to previous episodes in this episode, even in her own, like, alternate universe because she's got her Fry's memory box. Yeah. That's got the the candy heart, the You Leave Me Breathless candy heart in it. It's got... What is it? The... the pie, There's a few things pie, in there, yeah. oil, whatever that was. There's the, uh, some sort of spoon with, like, a picture of Fry on the handle that's wearing a the crown. Slurm King. Yeah, he's that. got, like, the Slurm King crown on. Fake mustache. Mm -hmm. uh, um, and, oh, what was I going to say? I also like, they wrap it up where it's, like, Fry got impaled fully through him. Yeah. But he was fine because the poison got Leela. <laughs> right. <laughs> right, well, they, 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 they yeah, uh, like, a 12-inch stab wound <laughs> through your entire body is all right. Like, yeah. you can come back from that. <laughs> uh, it's the future, I guess. <laughs> they, were like, they do the don't worry, be happy thing. And she's like, were you just singing to me? And Bender's like, no, I can't. I'm not allowed to sing. Court order. <laughs> Court order. <laughs> <laughs> Which. Uh, but his dream, his, Bender's dream is to become a folk singer. That's another right? way you know that they're in an alternate. Oh, see, you're just putting dream. too many dots together. That's, oh, they also had the. Almost came on for that episode. Oh, well, 2001 Space Odyssey. 
yeah. thing in that mm-hmm. um, where she's looking into the coffin. And then they go into the whole trippy sequence. Yeah. And, yeah. I mean, did it was you, pretty. Did you feel Superman referenced in that scene, too? Like, Fry's body out in space, like... Well, don't they don't, also... Uh, doesn't Spock get... When Spock dies, don't they shoot his body off into a, into space in a coffin? But yeah. he lands on a planet. Yeah, but this, I mean, I I th- I didn't think Superman. But Groening is a huge like Roddenberry fan, so mm-hmm. I just thought it was more like the Monolith from two thousand one, and then they start playing like the Zarathustra Spake and yeah, I think that's the like the thing they were going for. I do agree. There were no monkeys with bones though, so they totally blew that. <laughs> You, you know, they start hitting the bones. At least n- throw <laughs> Nibbler's skeleton in there. Yeah. It, I don't know. Um, just, I like Jamaica is the show me island. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a good line. That that and the, the human secretions thing. Probably two of my favorite episodes. The favorite lines in this season for sure. Maybe in the whole series. And then when uh, La Barbara yells at Hermes for... Always burning. You're always things. lighting something up, Herbie. <laughs> <laughs> but I like so about that. they've kind of established that he is a big pothead. But I feel like early on they just uh, well he was they he did was, the bait and switch with it. He was burning Fry's time card so a zombie couldn't come back to ask <laughs> for his last paycheck. That <laughs> uh, is always like a bait and switch, <laughs> but it's like implied that I mean he's Jamaican. Well, there was so. the one mm-hmm. where. Uh, Dwight and Kubert were smoking his weed. And yeah. He was just like, that's not mine. And then he put it away in his pocket while it was still on fire. <laughs> the that's, other. It's not a cigar and it's not mine. <laughs> <laughs> the other, like, low key line from this episode, I think, was uh, at, right after Fry gets killed. Uh, when Bender goes, who will make Bender's waffles just the way he likes them now? <laughs> <laughs> This is number twenty four on IGN's top top twenty five. Yeah, I I think it belongs I think that's there. That's accurate. I think it's, this belongs there better than some of the episodes that have come up on that list before. Mm-hmm. Um, so I guess in the end, she's only out for two weeks, and they're just waiting for her to revive. But Fry talked to her nonstop, like a parrot of the sea. <laughs> which <laughs> I don't know if that's just saying that there's a specific bird of of the sea that would talk like that, or it's supposed to be like a chicken of the sea. <laughs> I didn't get it either. The parrot of the sea. <laughs> but it. if you were, if chicken of the sea is tuna, would the parrot of the sea be something else that also talks like, incessantly? Well, like a pirate always has has the the parrot on his shoulder. Maybe I, I don't know. Was that a real thing? I don't think so. It became a caricature of pirates for some reason, but I don't know maybe why. Maybe the birds were just eating the lice off their head or something. Could be symbiotic relationship. Yeah. You know. Are. I know about space pirates and space parrots, but I don't know about re- the regular ones. The regular ones. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, what, do you, what can you tell us about space pirates? I know that space pirates uh, are after Han Solo for some money. Are those space pirates or are they bounty hunters? Space. I would call them space pirates. Okay. I'm just. I'm at, at least like in I don't. Force Awakens. Okay. Sorry, I can't talk about space without talking about Star Wars. So. Okay. On Star Wars. Well, you have both stars and wars going on. It's all the same thing. When I've seen a Star War within a month's time, I can't not make that <laughs> reference. <Yeah. laughs> Somebody finally put up a uh, blue milk gif that I've been looking for. Oh, the blue and the green? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I put it up on, uh, on Facebook. It was, uh, I need to look that up. Gross. <laughs> it's just, one of my just favorite, gross. Just as gross as the other parts. day. I'm not going to spoil it because I'm sure there are people who I, listen who have not seen The Last Jedi I yet. laughed so hard at that scene. That was my was favorite best. funny it moment the best. In, the, in the movie. Being a Tim and Eric fan, it kind of was like that kind of bizarre. Yeah. Gross. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Amazing. And very like uh, the creature kind of deviated from the typical Lucasy stuff. It was almost like a Monty Python thing. A little yeah. They went Is this in its grotesquery. They went they went kind of gross on it. Um but I, I I thought it fit entirely. Like I I loved it. Mm-hmm. I don't know. We have a whole episode about our Star Wars review, so I'm not gonna talk about it too much. Yeah, I mean but, you know and it ties back to our earlier conversations about Fenugreek. So it's really it's all right. hey Everything is connected. Um, 
I think that ends up being the end of the episode. There, for this, she's just touched that he stayed and waited for her, right? But he also stinks and needs to take a shower. So did she. And, and so was did it she. Uh, <laughs> when she came awake? Was it was that when Hermes made the quote, "Sweet three toed sloth from the ice planet Hoth"? Yes, it's one of my favorite Hermes exclamations. <laughs> was he actually referencing Star Wars? Like exactly. right on. See? Oh man, mm-hmm. do, you, do you think the ice planet Hoth is a real planet in the Futurama universe? Oh, yeah. If Hermes knows about it. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, or it is, is it on referencing Earth. Star Wars? It is on Earth. Earth. Maybe Star-, Star Wars is forever. Yeah. Mm. It's probably Unlike Star, Star Trek, which oh. we talked about last episode. Oh. Oh. But Graining is like a bigger Star Trek fan, I think, than Star Wars. <laughs> 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 He's also a time traveler. That's For real? True. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, Simpsons predict everything. It, just, it has predicted everything. Mm. Oh, Disney no. buying Fox, President Trump. Oh, God. Which is why I think Snoke is actually Kylo Ren (laughs) from the future. (laughs) Oh, you just made my head hurt. (laughs) You're welcome. Um, So we had a question posed to us via Twitter from uh, from listener Jesse, who's reached out to us before. Hi, Jesse. Um, he had he had a kind of you know we we had the question before of like if you could see a spinoff who would you like to see a spinoff of or Tom Tom had a fuck Mary kill thing going on for a while that g- gladly didn't last very long <laughs> <laughs> you you run out of viable options very quickly very quickly mm-hmm. um, but the question was is there a character on the show that you see as like an idealized romantic partner and the you know the thing that brought it up was in one of the more recent episodes. Uh, I mentioned something about Leela being sort of like, she's basically the perfect woman, so there, because uh, she's strong and confident and, like, really capable and takes mm-hmm. no shit and, yeah. you know. Um, in that sense, uh, this is a question for me, by the way. This is a question for everybody, because okay, I've already I answered it. I don't know. Uh, I feel like I've had a Leela in my lifetime. Did she and- have purple hair? I mean, I, I'm all for purple hair. But she didn't have But she did not. Did she have one eye? Uh, she, I don't know how to count, but I don't think so. Okay. I um, actually, uh, I had uh, purple hair once, and I had pink eye at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> That's a true story. <laughs> and I, I was, really. <laughs> <I> was Leela, <laughs> pretty literally. <laughs> I was wearing an eye patch, and I had purple hair, and there are pictures of it online. <laughs> So oh. like, I went to see Kiss, and I had to wear an eye patch uh, oh my because God. my eye was really gross. So that is yeah. incredible. Mm-hmm. I will say, I had a really bad viral infection in my eye. <laughs> and did you get better from Gene Simmons licking it out of your eye? Uh, well, space honey. I was going to ask <laughs> if they played "Lick It Up." <laughs> you could have lifted the patch, but like, go for it. <laughs> it's uh. We'll say, based off of the storylines of this show, I've had a Leela who I've kind of pursued for a while as a fry. Okay. And didn't work out in the end. So but is Leela, say, is Leela the one that you would go after, or do you feel like there's somebody else on the show that you'd be like, like Amy or I'd uh, honestly, Zoidberg? Like, if I weren't a cis male, yes, I would honestly go for fry. I think Fry is the ideal romantic partner. I agree. Right? Really? Mm-hmm. Explain. Even though he's dumb. He's real dumb. Uh, he's, he's devoted as fuck. He is. He's sweet, and he's, like, smart enough in his own way. He, like, I don't know. Because I, th- there have been some, yeah, I definitely, I can tell you who I wouldn't pick. Like, I definitely wouldn't go for Amy because she sucks. Amy kind of sucks. I would sucks. not be able to tolerate Amy yeah. in any way whatsoever. Um, she definitely. also reminds me of my ex-wife, so no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know. Like, Hermes, no. Just because he's, you know, too much of a bureaucrat. Well, Barbara wouldn't be that bad. La Barbara kind of is real flighty, and she's always leaving Hermes for yeah. Barbados Slim. Yeah. But she's... Fine. La Barbara. Um, like if Hermes wasn't so uptight, maybe she would stay. Zoidberg smells. <laughs> it's true. Awful. <laughs> and he's selfish. Mm-hmm. He's also kind of, well, Zoidberg's not dumb. He just doesn't understand human anatomy. He's like a, he's like a very capable alien doctor. 
Yeah. What if that worked That's to covered. your advantage, though, just by accident? Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Definitely not Zap Brannigan. No. Kiff? Kiff is too weak. Okay. I would end up being Amy if, if Kiff was my romantic partner because uh, I would squash the will out of Kiff that. Kiff would turn person. you into a bad person. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So I don't know. I'd, I'd have to go. I think turns. just Fry would just be the, the best option if, if I had to choose anybody on the, on the crew. Eh, robot. See, me, <laughs> me being from the 20th century, I'd go with 21st century girl that he meets at the bar the one time. <laughs> <laughs> like, remember when the... <laughs> Good choice. That's, uh, uh, yeah. I mean, that's a viable option for sure. Because you have a lot in common, kind of. Like when the monkeys attacked or the aliens attacked in 2026. What did you say? Like when the carrot people enslaved the human race or something like that? I don't remember. Yeah, I, I know what you're yeah. talking about, though. It's It's a... I mean, it's an interesting... Question, because I mean, because really, you're talking about these sort of uh, cartoonish <laughs> people, but they've also they also have these developed personalities now, where like you see the things that you find attractive. Or and whatever. we're talking if we were a cartoon, that, who well, would we do? Right, yeah. Lee but Lemon. I don't know. That's, like, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> that's my choice. Lee that's what Lemon. Graining has I've been sitting here down. quietly contemplating. That's what Lee Graining Lemon. has nailed down so well, though, is it's this cartoonish, ridiculous world, but for some reason, it's always, no matter how ridiculous it gets, it's so fucking relatable. Sorry, I don't know if I'm allowed to swear that. Yeah. Much, but it's so fucking relatable, and, like, I'm looking forward to his new Netflix cartoon. That'll be interesting. Oh. Mm -hmm. Big time. I haven't heard anything about that for a while. It's supposed to come out this year, I think. I'm pretty they're, sure. They're whipping animators in Korea as we speak. <laughs> <laughs> uh, any any final thoughts? Anybody? I'm, I like this episode a lot. It still stands up, uh, rewatching it again and again and again. It's not usually one I don't skip. Wait, it's mm -hmm. not usually one you don't skip? It's usually not one I skip. Okay, I think that... I'm trying Usually to not one I skip. Yes, right. that works. As, okay, I, I, was just, I was trying to count the negatives and I got lost. I had I had some ar arithmetic uh, problems this week. But yeah, no, that's all I have to say about that. <laughs> all right, forced. <laughs> <laughs> we'll go. We'll go for a run after this. Uh, well, thanks for coming on the show again, Devin. Thank How are you. things over at the Second Shot Podcast? Uh, they've been going good. Uh, there's we took a, a couple weeks off for the, the first time. We hard. like literally since we started last, I think late February, we did we released an episode every week until last week, and uh, we did so, some. We we went bi weekly for a little holidays, bit for yeah. the holidays. Yeah, it's so like similar situation. Yeah, here. it's it's it was nice to have some time off. I feel bad for neglecting any listeners that were looking forward to it. I don't. Screw them. Yeah, you don't need them. <laughs> Fuck them all. <laughs> uh, but it, no, it's been it's been going amazing. We just recently joined the Audio Boom uh, fucking train. We switched from SoundCloud to Audio Boom to get on the Above Below Entertainment Network. So who all is who all is in that? Um, it is it. It's a really good network. There's the Fantasy Boys podcast with Bill Squire and Ryan Ryan DePerna, as well as Brian Kenny. Oh, nuts! And uh, there's there's Teach These Devils with uh, James Earl Brassfield and Wilson Rivera. We got a show coming soon from Jess Falstick. Uh, I, oh, at Ad Hominem Attack Show with Chris Paw, Jeremy Shear, and all those guys. Uh, I hope I'm not forgetting a show. Feel like I might. I feel be. like we've been excluded because there's a lot of former guests that are <laughs> part of this network. You guys, like, <laughs> we're come on to the network, Pete. guys. Come on to the network. You get the thing is, you guys don't need the help of the network. Like this show is, I feel like really established, and I love this show. Like Futurama Please, is one of my man. favorite shows. I love nice. that there's like some good people doing an awesome show about Futurama. Cleveland. Plus, I love just coming to hang out with you guys. So thanks oh, for yeah. having me. It's always a good time. Tommy, we got to get you on second show. Yeah, I know. I, I, I think Gotham's a good one. It. That's perfect. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, yeah. 
We have to. Set it up. I want to talk about that show always because it's Batman. So yeah. fuck yeah. yeah but it's not. And that's <laughs> <laughs> I think, it's not I think we just summed up the episode right there. <laughs> Did uh is there anything else that you're doing besides second shot that you want people to look up? Uh I'm not doing too much. I'm still writing my comic. I still haven't found an artist <laughs> to do shit. That's real hard. I'm thinking about learning to draw like draw myself. <laughs> uh, I'm not a bad drawer, but I feel like I can pay somebody to do a lot better uh, for Spectrum. And uh, I don't know. Besides that, I just got my first fucking check from anything through comedy or audio recording. Really? That was more. The this one check was more than anything I've made through stand up comedy in my entire life. <laughs> was so. this? You recorded some stuff for the hospital, didn't you? Is that I what did. it was? Yeah. I did. Yeah, you're. Right. And uh, they finally fucking paid me. Wait, what? <laughs> I, what? Was, I, wait. Even though I owe them. <laughs> were you like? Money. Are you? Are you one of those pre recorded voices that they play in the house? Where like paging Doctor Davis, paging Doctor <laughs> Davis, please. I started doing. No, I wish I was that. I don't think I'd get. That means somebody that. died. Yeah, that would be fucking sweet. Though. What, uh, I no, feel but powerful seriously, what, to announce what did you do people. with this hospital thing? I, I started doing like this audio blog, uh, this health blog that it, it's on their website for Metro Health or whatever. Oh, crazy. And uh, like this run I've been doing has all been for like HIV information, mm-hmm. which uh, I don't know. I think people need to know about HIV. It's like not as, it's really not as bad as people think it is, as bad as the stigma is portrayed it to be these days. Right. And, uh, yeah, so I started doing that. That's on their website. Uh, I'll probably be doing more for them, but fucking, I just hope they keep giving me money. <laughs> <laughs> that's all. You, that's all you can hope for anymore, right? Do they pay? Oh, just make them pay you in bitcoins or something, or at least litecoins. Yeah, I anything. don't know anything about cryptocurrency. Me neither. I just know that it. At the Nerd Melt store where they do all the stuff in L.A., there is a Bitcoin <laughs> ATM. <laughs> I'll give or, you seven Shroot Bucks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. To buy some beats. <laughs> and a Stanley nickel. Uh, yeah, <laughs> so where can people find you online then? Uh, you can find me at News on Devin on Twitter, at Devin Newsom on Instagram. Uh, f- follow me on Facebook. I'll, I'll probably friend you if you we have some mutual friends or if you're just like a person who likes me message me i don't know i'll talk back to you it's whatever follow us at second shot pod at gmail.com or that same thing on instagram twitter follow us on facebook listen to us you should yeah. it's a fun show it's uh it goes it goes twisty turny kind of like we do <laughs> right, <yeah. laughs> all right uh well on that note this is uh this is the first show we're recording in 2018, so we've officially been in three calendar years as a show. Damn. Who knew? Uh, you can be found at slurmcast.com where there's all of our past episodes, all I of our future you still, episodes. I can't will remember be there. when I have to renew that <laughs> website. <laughs> they'll, they'll tell us. And uh, it also has a link to our T Public Shop, so you can buy Futurama themed T-shirts. Oh, yeah. That uh, and non Futurama themed T-shirts. Just use the link and buy whatever you want. Um, Consume. Yeah, spend your money so we get a tiny, tiny, tiny portion of it. We're on Facebook. We're on Twitter and Instagram at Slurmcast Pod. You can email us at slurmcastpod at gmail dot com. Uh, text, call, leave voicemails at two one six four three eight ten seventy seven. Um. And I don't know if you remember this or not, Tom, but that's the cost of a cheese pizza and a Coke in 1999. The same deal. Cheese pizza and a large Coke. I don't know why you got to bring size into it. Um, <laughs> I think, and that's it, right? And review us on iTunes and uh, stay warm because it's fucking cold. It's very cold. Maybe not where you are. So cold. Oh, 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 oh. Bye. 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 <laughs>